This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Ashley. And this is Life Rewired. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Rob. How's the weather treating you? Uh, we're getting ready for a storm. How about you? Uh, also storms. It's nice and sunny, so I'm sure that's going to cause a nice little, what do you call it, where the sun feeds the storm, or whatever you call it. I think it tends to get worse whenever you have a lot of heat. And... So we're going to brace ourselves. We're going to get through this one. <laughs> yep. So how's it been? Been all right. How about you? Not too bad. Everyone's been asking about you. People miss you. So we're so glad you're back with the program again. We had one little week off, but we're back. Yes. Today, we're going to talk about self-love, self-care. And what does that mean for you? It could be, it can mean different things for different people. But uh, we jotted down a few little notes. I did some show prep today. Are you proud of me? <laughs> um, Round of a clap for Rob. Hey, Rob did research. <laughs> so... The first and most important thing is you can't say yes to everything because sometimes saying yes to others is saying no to yourself. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for you? For me, it might be someone inviting you to go to a crowded event. It might be saying, oh, it'll only take a few minutes and you know that person's going to keep you out for eight hours. <laughs> so you have to understand your boundaries and create those stick with those How, what does that mean for you ashley um i guess not being too much of a people pleaser putting myself first mm. yes that's a hard one for me yeah do you tend to lean to that people pleasing side uh yes i do yeah i can see that with you i could see it being half and half because you also know how to stand your ground too when it it's something that you really just aren't comfortable with. Right. Yeah. But I could see you also put yourself in situations where you're like, what did I say yes to? Right. Yeah. I think we all, some of us, not all of us, but some of us tend to lean to that category. And I, I don't know if that gets worse after a TBI or not, but maybe we want acceptance. Do you think that would, that could fall into that category could be acceptance or you know wanting to go back to the way things were we did that before you know brain injury post-concussion syndrome and now not so yeah. much you know might be wanting to get back to the things back to the way things were but um sometimes you gotta say yes to you and no to somebody else yeah you have to learn to put yourself first because if you don't put yourself first who's going to right well, that's part of the reason why i was off for all those weeks is i had to put myself first and i'm proud of you for doing that yes so i did tell rob no many times <laughs> and i said when you're ready but when you ready. survived without me you had a lot of great guests on so i did i survived we but that doesn't mean we didn't miss you though we had so many people go, what's wrong with Ashley? What's, when's she coming back? What is it wrong with Ashley? I'm just kidding. <laughs> she has a TBI. That's what's wrong. <laughs> Same thing that you're going through. <laughs> but I didn't divulge any information. I might have told a few people that you were off hunting pygmies in South Africa, but uh, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> so another thing that you can do is to create a gratitude journal. And that sounds probably just cheesy, but if you think about it, if you're spending your life looking at everything you can't do, are you giving yourself any motivation to raise the bar, so to speak? Does that make sense? Yes, I actually did one last year and it was interesting to figure out that it was very hard for me to find things, you know, outside of, oh, I'm thankful for a job and I'm thankful for a home. Like, 
you know, the basic necessities of things to yeah. be grateful for. So it was a good challenge in trying to find some three positive things that happened uh, that day. And some days were easier than others, but it definitely was a good reflection at the end of the day that something good, you know, three things good, you know, happened today. That's awesome. You know, and share with, you know, you don't have to keep this private to yourself because sometimes sharing also encourages others. I know when we first uh, went into lockdown, when COVID started, I thought, geez, this is going to be a long time because I, I didn't buy into the, it's only going to be two weeks and we'll be back. So I started a challenge on Facebook every single day. I said, today I am grateful for, ba, 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 ba. and it could be small things, mm -hmm. coffee. I was very grateful for coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> coffee was my friend. But um, I started finding that the more I did that, other people would chime in. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of contagious. So spreading joy and happiness can also be very contagious just like spreading negativity can as well, because we tend to attach ourselves to what's going on in this, at the current uh, state, don't we? Yes. Yeah. It's very easy to fall down that rabbit hole. Also, if you're going to journal a win journal. So what do you think about a win journal? What would that mean for you, Ashley? Is like a wind journal, like a set of accomplishments yeah. or, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. I mean, I know for me personally, like I would probably do well with the wind journal for like pre professional achievements mm -hmm. as opposed, as opposed to personal achievements, but like somebody who's newly diagnosed as TBI, I think, you know, in hindsight, that would have been great if I had um, a journal back when I was going through it that basically stated this is what I achieved today. But then again, writing was like a trigger for like the migraine. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, only if you're able to do it. But, you know, I remember something my mom said about it being my job to get back to work by taking care of myself. So every day I felt better, felt like a win for me. And then when I was finally able to start driving again and able to like, you know, read a little bit without getting symptoms, you know, be able yeah. to keep the lights on. Those were all little wins. Mm -hmm. Not to sidetrack us, but do you feel that you can work in a well-lit environment or do you still keep the lights kind of a, on a dim? Uh, yeah. Um, if I go into the office, which I go in twice a month, they have those um, luminescent lights and I always keep those off. I have like a little table lamp that if I need light outside of like natural sunlight, I can put it on. Um, but yeah, I don't think the light sensitivity thing is going away anytime soon. What about you? No. Uh, you see how bright my office is right mm -hmm. now? This is not how it looks when I'm working. Mm -hmm. I have, and I'll just show you. I'll I can turn yeah. this light off. <laughs> this light is not on when this camera is not on. Yes. Um, usually the shades are shut because the where the sun comes in, it, mm -hmm. it brings plenty of light in here. But right. this bright light above me, it's mm -hmm. never on when I'm working. Mm -hmm. You know, small periods of time, that's okay. But I, I can't sit here for an eight-hour day and expect that I'm not going to have a massive headache by the time I'm at the end of my work day. That's one of the benefits of being able to work from home is you can kind of choose your working environment. Yeah. Yeah. Working in an office is harder. I don't know how your office is set up at our office. Well, your office is a little bit better than ours is because they're all of those new led lighting and uh, it is bright and okay. there is no dimming anything. So if I worked in the office, I'd have to wear sunglasses all day. Mm. Yeah. Or That's just fun. find another job, <laughs> which is not very feasible. Um, which brings us to our next, oh, well, well we didn't finish the, the wind journal. So basically the idea behind the wind journal 
would be to measure your progress. And that is something I really wish I would have done just like you at the very beginning, you mm-hmm. know, cause it might, you might even be something as simple as saying today, I tied my shoes, you know, you look six from us. Now you're, you tie like a, like a, a breeze mm-hmm. and you're going, wow, six months ago, I could even tie my shoes. So it's a good thing to build up your confidence as well. Mm-hmm. So now let's move on to the next topic, which would be creating a morning ritual, which is super, 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 super important. If you go about your day and you just kind of willy nilly it, you're, you're never going to find things. Where did I put my keys? You know, I I've spoke before about the uh, memory station where I keep my wallet, my keys, everything important that I need to function as a human being is kept at, at my memory station. Also known to ladies as purses, but for men, <laughs> Rob has created a work a memory station. <laughs> yeah, it's in our kitchen right by the uh, television. The kitchen seems to be, and I'm sure it's probably your way at your house too. The kitchen seems to be where everybody congl- conglomerates. What's the word I'm looking for? Where everybody just kind of gathers. Oh, okay. See, I have a galley kitchen, so really there's not room there for people Um, but living room dining room definitely people converge that's the word i'm looking for (laughs) i think that's the word i'm looking for for you you said it that's the one i was trying to figure out (laughs) you know sometimes when you have a tbi don't try to to search these big words because they're not going to (laughs) come um but anyway the the routine that helps anybody, even if you don't have a brain injury, you should have a, a routine. Yes. What is your thoughts about that? I mean, I've always had a routine. Um, it definitely helps ease the transition into whether it's the work day or the weekend where you got to get stuff done around the house um, because you're not in your 20s anymore. Ain't that the <laughs> truth. Sorry. Um, but yes, it definitely helps, you know, get the day started. Mm -hmm. Everyone starts with that cup of coffee or whatever. If you don't drink coffee, I wonder about you. (laughs) Are you a coffee drinker? I am, but my husband gave up caffeine a couple of years ago and, uh, he seems to be doing better without it than he was with it. it. But I don't think it's something I could ever do that's going to be one my one vice for the rest of my life oh yeah i have to have a coffee or i should say people need me to have my coffee (laughs) don't poke the bear Mm -hmm. uh don't grab your cell phone the first thing in the morning that's that was a big one that they say to do but i'm gonna be honest with you who does not do this i know I'm guilty too. Yeah. So food for thought. We will just throw it out there and I can tell you don't to do it, but I'm all sure you will. Cause that's the first thing in my hand in the morning is that cell phone. Then I don't know. Maybe I can challenge myself for the week to see if I can resist doing that first thing in the morning. Let's, let's take a challenge. Let's both make that challenge and see how long we can go without grabbing the phone first thing in the morning. Okay. And define like how long that has to last, like, or an hour. Um, let's say the first half hour. First half hour. Okay. Yeah. I think it's doable. Don't you? Yes. It's just going to be a matter of remembering it because of short term memory. loss. Yeah. We're making this agreement today. And then tomorrow morning, as soon as the alarm goes off, we're going to go, you'll be five minutes into it goes, I think. Weren't we just supposed to not be in our phones? Oops. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to try to remember. You know what they say. They say you shouldn't be on your phone before you go to bed. Are you guilty of this? Mm-hmm. Maybe we should try to challenge ourselves not to take the phone to bed. Let's start with the morning routine. And then if that <laughs> works out, we can add that. I just think it's a little much right now to try to do both, at least for me. <laughs> okay. We'll see how, how good we do with the morning routine before we move on to that one. <laughs> and lastly, the positive affirmations. This sounds like the cheesiest one of them all, 
but it's really not. Look at positive affirmations every day, you know, things to inspire you to be a better person. You know, the reason they say that to do this, it sounds so stupid, but it is, it's really the truth. Whenever you're, whatever you're putting into the noggin, that's what you're going to be accustomed to. That's what you're going to, we're creatures that what we hear is what we believe, right? Mm -hmm. And if you do nothing but dwell on the negative all day long, what are you going to be? You're going to be negative. And that's not great for a brain injury. No, not all. Yeah. I don't know. Are you one to look up affirmations? Um, I have like affirmation cards that I use sometimes when I feel like I really need some positive feedback, but then also, um, I've been kind of really hard on myself lately. So I put a screen thing on both my work phone and my personal phone. Um, that's a, that's a background that says, be kind to yourself. So it's kind of like my constant mm -hmm. affirmation because on the phone a lot for work and for, you know, leisure to remind myself that I need to be kind to myself. Yeah. That's a hard one. I preach that all day, every day, be kind to yourself, be kind to yourself. So I'm glad that you picked that one. That's one of my big ones. Yes. Work in progress. I'm one of those idiots. I don't want to say idiot. I, now I'm that's not, not a positive affirmation. To myself. I, I caught myself <laughs> and so did my co-host. But I'm one of those people that are always posting these positive, uplifting things all the time. So if you're friends with me on Facebook, you you probably mm -hmm. see that more than you care to right. see. But. So well, that's a challenge for our viewers. Post at least once a week, post some kind of an affirmation on Facebook. And I'm actually and going others. through a social media detox right now. We'll see how long that lasts. Okay, so I'll see you on there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very. <laughs> How that's long? My, that's my positive affirmation. I actually want to see, like, I used to do it for Lent. Um, so oh, okay. I want to see if I can break my record for Lent, which is like 40 something days. So, oh, I really? See. Yeah. Awesome. So, my what day are getting... we on? My cousin's getting married the end of September. So I want to see if I can make it, you know, the end of September, which is a little shorter than 40 days, but maybe eventually I'll get to being able to do more than 40 days. Well, it's a start. Yes. What, what day are we on? Uh, well, <laughs> it was supposed to start this weekend, but that didn't happen. So it's going to start right after this podcast okay. so tonight will be night one so i'll be sure to text you instead of sending stuff to you through facebook messenger yes i delete i deleted the apps except for facebook messenger okay yeah but so we're going to support you in your journey to stay off social media for yes yeah several days <laughs> awesome well that's all I have. So I'm going to kick it over to you to give us our closing thoughts and send us home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'm Ashley. And I'm Rob, and this is Life Rewired. Bye.